let's uh, let's talk about the word paradise for a minute. Of course, this is the Greek word up on the screen. And the passage you see on the screen is Genesis 2.8 in the Greek Old Testament. So let's turn to Genesis 2.8. Let's have someone read verse 8 there for us. И насадил Господь Бог Райба, да именно востоке, и поместил там человека, которого сыграл. Now, do you have the word paradise in the Russian Bible? No, I mean, is, is, it, is it in verse 8? It's not paradise, but it's the Russian variant. Right. Okay, what does, what does the um, word say in Russian? Is it the word for garden? No, it's more like a, you know, a place of bliss, happiness, this kind of thing. Okay, so in, in verse 8, does it say that God... Planted a what? Paradison. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this place, but in and then. It's, it's not a garden. It's not a garden. It says a garden? It's not a garden. It's not a garden. It's not a garden. Okay, so so it that, does it use the Greek word? I don't yeah. think it's Greek. Is it? It's, it's a Russian word that describes the place of happiness, the place of, uh, you know, some kind of bliss, happiness, this kind of thing. Interesting. Well, yes. the, the, Greek word, the Greek word paradise means a garden. And you have it again in verse 9 where it says, in the midst of the garden. Now, does yours not say garden in verse 9 either? No, it's not garden. It's again the same word. Okay. Pronounce the word for me.
Have you learned have you learned in your Greek that the word ek means out of? And do you see that it says that God threw them ek to paradiso, he threw them out of the garden? All right, so my point here is that paradisios means garden. It means this beautiful, lush, perfect paradise place. And also, look at this again in, in Genesis 2.8. Look at the screen up here. It says the paradise of Eden. So Eden was the paradise. All right, so the concept of paradise comes from the Garden of Eden. Yes, Brother Stas. See. <laughs> but it's the Septuagint, right? What about the Hebrew text? Is it garden there? Yes. Okay. It says. In the Hebrew text, it's garden. And the word Eden is a Hebrew word. And the word Eden means joy or rapture or bliss. So, so Garden of Eden means a, a garden of joy or, or happiness or bliss.
So the reason man was cast out of Eden the reason man was cast out of paradise is so that he would no longer have access to the tree of life. The tree of life is the tree that grows in the paradise of Eden. Now I want you to turn to Revelation chapter 2. This is going to be in the New Testament. Revelation 2 verse 7. Everybody, somebody read there for us. So if we overcome in this life, it says here that we will be able to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. So, so we lost paradise in Genesis. But we're founded again in Revelation 2 verse 7. Now turn to Revelation 22. Revelation 22. And we're going to look at uh, verse 1 and 2. Now let me ask you a question. In Revelation 2.7, where does it say the tree of life is? In God's paradise. Yes, it's in the paradise of God. And yet here in Revelation 22, you find it in the middle of the holy city, New Jerusalem. So that tells me that the holy city, New Jerusalem, and paradise must be the same place. And of course you know that in Luke chapter 23, uh, the thief on the cross was told that today he would be with Jesus in paradise. What do we find in paradise? We find the tree of life. We find that joy and gladness that was only left in Eden. We find what was lost when man fell and sinned. Let me show you one more scripture. And we had a question at the back, back there. Yeah. 
Просто дерево Сарта был физическим, и он был на земле находился, и его жизнь была на земле. И поэтому у меня был вопрос, собственно, как составляло дерево, и как оно потом оказалось в том же новом Alright, so now, after the judgment, the new city, the new Jerusalem has come down out of heaven to rest upon the new earth. And now, no longer does God have a separate dwelling place. But verse 3 says that now God lives with men. It reminds me of the Garden of Eden where God and man would go walking together in the cool of the day. Это мне напоминает об Эдемском саде, где Бог и человек вместе входили по саду в прохладе дня. And so again, what was lost in Eden is regained at the end. Так что снова, то, что было утрачено в Эдеме, снова обретается человеком в конце. All right, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Он дал на Волга. Общий вопрос, не только мой. Он сказал, что разбойник, Иисус сказал, что он войдет в парадис, то есть он будет в раю. Получается, именно Волга Дес? Same place. It is the same place. 
place. There's no difference. <laughs> We all dead people go to Haiti. And some some people who go to Haiti go to Gehenna. Gehenna is part of Haiti. And some people who go to Haiti go to Paradise. Okay, some people who go to Hades go to Gehenna, and some people who go to Hades go to Paradise. But Hades is not a place. Hades just means where all dead people are. Now, the, the, the difference between after judgment is there are no more deaths. See, when death is taken out of the equation entirely, and all of these people who have been, their souls have been in either paradise or Hades, they have been raised from the dead and death has been destroyed. And they uh, now have new bodies. And now they can live in the new Jerusalem in the paradise of God and eat the tree of life forever. And the only reason there's no more Hades, or the idea of Hades, is because death no longer exists. And there's no dead people and living people anymore, there's just living people. Now you'll notice in verse 2 that it says he was caught up into the third heaven. Now this seems to describe some uh, miraculous experience that Paul was given by God. Кажется, что это отрывок описывает какой-то чудесный 
личный опыт, который пережил uh, Павел, когда раб Бог. But if you'll compare verse 4, it says he was caught up unto paradise. Но если сравнить это с началом 4 стиха, то здесь сказано, что он был восхищен в парадис. So whatever he means by the third heaven in verse 3, or verse 2, he also uh, he refers to it as paradise in verse 4. He называл третьим небом во втором стихе, то же самое называется и парадизом или раем четвертым. And in paradise, he saw uh, things and, and saw visions that were too wonderful to tell about. This is like John did in the book of Revelation. Where doors were opened in heaven and John was allowed to look into paradise. That's why John in Revelation 2.7 could tell the people that the ones who overcome will get to eat the tree of life in the paradise of God. Now listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. Listen very carefully. Before the judgment and the resurrection, there is no difference at all between paradise and heaven. After the judgment and the resurrection, there will be no more heaven because heaven will come down to the new earth. And when God lives with man in the new earth, that will be paradise again. Right now there's one realm for God and one realm for man. That will not be true after the resurrection and the judgment. So right now, when we die, we go to heaven or paradise. These are just two different words to describe the same thing. But after the judgment, there will be no death, and there will be no separate realms for God and man. And we will live in a place called paradise. It's also called the New Jerusalem. And it's also referred to as the New Earth. These are not my terms. These are the Bible's terms. So technically, if we want to really uh, speak biblically, we hope to spend eternity in paradise. We hope to spend eternity in the New Jerusalem. This is what the book of Hebrews is speaking about in Hebrews 11.10. Look at Hebrews 11.10. In Hebrews 11, verse 10. Look in your Bibles. Hebrews 11.10. 
this this is tells us that Abraham was looking for a city that has foundations whose builder and maker is God. In Hebrews 11:16, these people were looking for a city. Эти люди искали города. A heavenly one. Небесного. God is not ashamed to be called their God because He has prepared for them a city. And if you look at Hebrews 13, verse 14, we do not have here in this world an abiding city. But we seek for that city which is to come. And if you read Revelation 21, verse 1 and 2, that is the holy city, New Jerusalem, that comes down out of heaven from God. I did not write any of this. I'm just pointing it out. Look at Second Peter chapter three. Посмотрите второй Петра глава три. Verses ten through. Uh, 13. Have someone read that, please. Сидящий день Господень когда-то которые воспоминанные небеса разрушены и разгоревшие стихи растают. Впрочем, мы по обетованию его ожидаем новое небо и новой земли, на которых обитает нам. Let your fingers do the walking. And your Bible do the talking. I love the, the thinking that is represented by that quietness. <laughs> Uh, where are the new earth and the new heaven will be in the same location? <laughs> <laughs> Wherever God makes it, I guess. Yeah, I think it's probably the same location, but we'll see. We'll have to see. But there does suggest that does suggest that there's some physicality to it. And we have a question from the man. Yes. He is troubled by first uh, Samuel twenty eight. The case was Saul and Samuel. Uh, verse fourteen. Is he talking about when the when the witch of Endor called up Samuel's sir, uh, soul? The, uh, uh, no, no, no. Yes, it's uh, this instance. What what's his question about that? 
But the miracle was done to show that Jesus was the resurrection and the life for all people, John 11:25. Yes, one last question and we'll have to go until next week. Не будем брать, как Господь говорил в Ветхом Завете, как Он в Новом Завете отвечает на молитвы. Как вы знаете? От Бога это или от сатаны? Вот молишься, и вот он дает тебе не одно, а несколько.